Good Thursday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window and not much to see once again today as we look down at a very, very smoky Wenatchee Valley. In fact, we have an air quality alert still in effect and will remain in effect until 10 a.m. all the way until Monday now. And look what's in our forecast, thunderstorms. That's right, the weak trough and area of low pressure will slide through the state. That's late Friday night, early Saturday, and we now have a 20 to 30 percent chance we could see some thunderstorm activity, which has also prompted a red flag warning that is in effect until 11 o'clock tomorrow night. Winds will kick up as this front moves through. We could see some lightning as well. Boy, we hope we don't see that. And if it does do all that, just bring some rain and all that's kind of iffy right now. We'll talk more about that and your complete weekend weather forecast coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. The Wenatchee Valley continues to struggle, as I mentioned, with poor air quality caused by a multitude of wildfires burning around the Pacific Northwest and California. Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz will present a surplus wildfire engine to Okanagan Fire District 7, which covers the town of Riverside. A seed row woolly woman was injured Tuesday in a two-vehicle accident near Mazama. And the National Park Service has identified the climber who fell 100 feet to his death Saturday in the Forbidden Peak area of the North Cascades National Park. But first we begin tonight. The Cougar Creek fire managers provided a briefing last night for residents of the Plain area. The lightning sparked wildfire has grown now to 10,834 acres. There are now just under 900 fire personnel working that fire. It's located on Timberland, about 20 miles northwest of Eniat and about seven and a half miles northeast of Plain. The next few days are critical as a red flag warning calls for record heat, followed by a cold front, as I mentioned, with windy conditions at times. A fire behavior analyst explained at last night's public meeting the crews plan to use the weather conditions to their advantage. The good news again with these type of winds is it locks the fire in places we want it to be it allows it to be consistent. When there's no wind, that fire can move in every direction, taking advantage of topography, taking advantage of different fuel types, like a hungry teenager going through your cabinets, okay? And so, when we have these consistent type of winds and the fuel is available and ready, we know where it's going. It's not a mystery. So when we know where it's going, then we can prepare. What you heard from our ops chief is that we are prepared because we know where it's going. We're looking out ahead because we have an incident meteorologist who can tell us days ahead, and so we're gaming this out. And so from a fire perspective, behavior perspective, what I'm expecting is that incremental growth to continue and that fire to seek what we call alignment. We're looking for it to go in places downwind. The days that were explosive growth that you saw um, when it started after the lightning, those were windy days and it moved in the direction of the wind. So we know where it's going and we have to do it safely and we have to, we can, we can only engage during certain parameters. So what we do often is we're working at night. We work and try to do things when the weather is on our side and we'll continue to do that. So from a fire behavior perspective, when this wind comes up and it stays dry, you can expect to see smoke in the air. But some of the smoke you're seeing today uh, was what we were doing, because we were doing the fire on our terms, which helps us out. It builds a buffer, it builds uh, a resilient landscape so that when the fire rolls through there, it will stop. The fire has resulted in a level one advisory now for Mad River Road to include the town of Ardenvor. That's new, that uh, was put into effect just after lunchtime today. Level three evacuation warnings for the upper Eniat Valley Road from Potato Creek to milepost 25 continue. Meanwhile, it was also reported that resources on the Lost Fire were able to mount an aggressive ground attack supported by aerial resources and were able to slow that fire's progress. The Lost Fire is currently estimated at 107 acres. 419 firefighters are currently deployed in Okanagan County on the Crescent Mountain Fire. Officials say the Crescent Mountain Fire consumed the Gilbert Fire overnight and will now report on the fires as one. 
The blaze has burned over 14,000 acres of forest land located in the headwaters of the Tri Twisp River Valley. Wednesday afternoon saw moderate fire behavior with some tree torching and running. Crews concentrated their efforts to establish contingency lines to protect homes and structures along Buttermilk Road area, <coughs> excuse me, which remains under a level two evacuation advisory. The advisory was expanded to the entire area of Twist River Road up Canyon from Little Bridge Creek Road. Fire officials predict with the expected warmer weather, crews anticipate the fire moving eastward and could result in an elevation to a level three evacuation notice for upper Twisp River residents. Well, the Wenatchee Valley continues to struggle with poor air quality caused by a multitude of wildfires burning around the Northwest, Pacific Northwest and California. Here was the gauge at the State Department of Ecology's air monitoring uh, site in Wenatchee. The prevailing winds are pushing the smoke to south and east, which causes even worse air quality conditions in the Eniat and Lake Chelan areas. An air quality alert is in effect until 10 a.m. on Monday. Well, as part of the Washington State Department of Natural Resources' ongoing efforts to strengthen rural fire districts and wildfire prone areas, Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz will present a surplus wildfire engine to Okanagan Fire District 7, which covers the town of Riverside. Commissioner Franz will ride the fire engine through the OMAC Stampede Grand Parade with District 7 Fire Chief Arnold Stevens before officially transferring ownership of the, to the fire district. The 2017 Washington State Legislature authorized the DNR to transfer ownership of its surplus engines to rural fire districts and wildfire prone areas at no cost. Along with the District 7 engine, DNR is also granting surplus engines this year to Okanagan County Fire Districts 12, which serves the area east of Mount Hall area, and Fire District 16, which serves the Aeneas Valley. Last year, DNR provided surplus engines also to uh, Okanagan County Fire Districts 3 in OMAC, 9 in Okanagan, 11 in Molson and Chisaw, and the Conconelli Volunteer Fire Department. A seed row woolly woman was injured Tuesday in a two-vehicle accident near Mazama. 21-year-old Tatiana Hoare was traveling west on State Route 20, about 16 miles west of Mazama, on a motorcycle when she failed to negotiate a curb, crossed the center line, and struck a pickup that was driven by 44-year-old Joseph Dietz of Winthrop. Hoare was injured in the crash and airlifted to Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. Dietz was uninjured in the accident. No drugs or alcohol were involved in the crash, and Hoare was charged with speeding. Well, the National uh, Park Service has identified the climber who fell 100 feet to his death Saturday in the Forbidden Peak area of the North Cascades National Park. 60-year-old Eric Lindbaum was with a group th of three climbers when he reportedly slipped and fell after he lost his footing on wet rock slabs. A Park Service helicopter crew flew in from Marble Mount to recover the body, that according to Skagit County Sheriff's Office. Well, coming up next, Washington State apple growers are expected to harvest a smaller crop this season compared to last year. Chelan County Commissioners provided a status report this week on the 8 Mile Lake Dam repair project. An Leavenworth area man accused of assaulting motorists on US 97 blew his pass last week was in court yesterday. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Choose the pros, Alignment Pros. When your vehicle needs brakes, shocks, struts, or alignment, choose the experts in their field. Alignment Pros and Express Lube with a five-star rating. The work they perform on your vehicle is as impeccable as their shop. With state-of-the-art equipment, Alignment Pros can handle all large or small vehicles. Specialty cars lifted or lowered, Alignment Pros does them all. Keep your car in top shape at Alignment Pros and Express Lube in East Wenatchee. Oh, hey, Nate, what you doing there? I'm just reading a book. A book? I didn't even know they made those anymore. Where'd you get it? Right down the street at Ye Olde Bookshop. Ye Olde Bookshop, I'm gonna go check it out. If you're looking for a good book to read or you're in the market for some beautiful handcrafted creations from local artisans, look no further than Ye Olde Bookshop right in the heart of downtown Wenatchee.
It's a free walk-in job search assistance center. It is designed to help job seekers with the tools that they need to find a job. We have partnered with libraries in five other cities providing the same types of services that we offer here, just there. Just walk in, we have laptops, and uh, we can help you with resume, cover letter. All of our services are paid for by the revenues earned in our store. Goodwill is just a tool that the community is using to help their neighbors find a job. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. Welcome back. In another news, Washington State apple growers are expected to harvest a smaller crop this season compared to last year. NCW Life Steve Hare reports. Washington State Tree Fruit Association predicts a fresh packed crop of 131 million boxes of fruit this season. But that's down 2% from last year's 134 million box crop. President John Devaney said in his words, harvest has started for some early varieties and growers anticipate a crop of excellent quality fruit, end quote. He said the members also report improved sizing over last year. Gala is projected to be the most numerous variety in 2018 at 24% of production. Red Delicious coming in second with 21.5%. Those varieties are followed by Fuji at 13.5%, Granny Smith at 13% of the total production. This year, Honeycrisp is forecast to come in at 10.8% of the total crop and Crips Pink at 4.5%. Organic apple production continues to increase and is forecast to be 14% of the total or a total of 18.9 million boxes. Steve Hare, NCW Life News. Chelan County Commissioners provided a status report this week on the 8 Mile Lake Dam Repair Project. The century-old dam is owned by the Icicle Peshastan Irrigation District. Last year's Jack Creek fire ravaged the surrounding mountainsides, leaving the lake vulnerable to severe runoff and possible dam failure. The first phase of repairs has been completed, but more work is planned. That according to Commissioner Keith Gaynor. We're talking about taking a pipe up there to install a siphon so that they can uh, drain the lake a little more and also get the water for the, the, the in-stream flows. And that's uh, still in the works. I mean, they'd, they'd like to get up there yet this fall and do some work on the, the dam. Uh, that's still being worked out with the, the permits and, and all the, the paperwork. So um, hopefully they'll get it, get it done because we hate to see them lose another season worth of uh, water storage because it has more impacts than just the irrigation district. I mean, with the, the flows and, and just the, the need for water in the watershed, uh, it's important to have that lake managed as it has been and meter that water out over the course of the summer. Gaynor says the irrigation district hopes to eventually replace the antiquated dam with a newer, more stable structure. What they ended up doing this spring was they took the earthen portion of the dam out and what they need to do is put, uh, you know, a, a, I guess a, a basically install a dam. And the difference that will be up there as far as the visual difference is that it will be a modern dam as opposed to a, a dam built in the 1920s, 30s. And so the, the earthen portion will probably be a concrete wall. There will be a wider spillway. The gates will look different. It will be more of a, a visual uh, fixture up there as opposed to just blending in with the environment the way it did. The project is currently undergoing an environmental impact study and is available for review and public comment through the Washington State Department of Ecology. A Leavenworth area man accused of assaulting motorists on US 97 Blewett Pass last week was in court Wednesday. Stuart Anthony Campbell is charged with felony assault, harassment and malicious mischief in connection with the July 26th incident. Campbell entered a not guilty plea at the, his arraignment in Chelan County Superior Court. Officials say Campbell was arrested after stacking sticks and logs across the roadway and then throwing the logs at passing motorists causing damage to at least one car's windshield. Campbell also allegedly threatened to kill the Prius driver as well as a passerby who tried to help her. Chelan County deputies arrived and were forced to tase Campbell in order to restrain him. His trial date is set for September 25th. His next scheduled court appearance, appearance rather, is August 29th for an omnibus hearing. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, your sports update with Eric Granstrom and our feature story tonight. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us.
With 15,000 square feet to explore, you'll find something special at the Antique Mall at Kashmir. For the do-it-yourselfers and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh and new again, the Antique Mall at Kashmir is the place to come find your next project. From the coin enthusiast to avid collectors, Antique Mall at Kashmir has treasures in every corner. Come find your treasure today. Antique Mall at Kashmir's friendly staff is here to help. Stop on by today. I have a doctor who knows what they're talking about. It's just so much more hands-on and friendly than anywhere else I've ever been. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed, and you feel accepted. We've just been grateful for the care and respect that we've been given there. And here when I come to visit my doctor, I'm not afraid to ask questions. It's not just about getting you in and out. I love my care at CBCH. It's awesome. Give it a try. <laughs> At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house, fresh, daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a good Thursday to you. You ready for a little football? I know, not me either, but uh, I'll be in Seattle. We'll talk about that in a moment. Right now, Brian Mogg separated himself from the field a bit Wednesday during the second round of the Washington State Golf Association Men's Amateur Championship. It's taking place at Gamble Sands up in Brewster. The Issaquah golfer has a two-stroke lead heading into today's final round after shooting a 5 under 65 yesterday. There's a four-way tie for second at 9 under between Michael Almonte, Ryan Maine, Michael Butler, and R.J. Mankey. We asked the WSGA's Nate Schroeder what they're playing for. Uh, they're playing to uh, get their name on the John Bodenhammer Memorial Trophy. Uh, uh, or perpetual trophy, I should say, not memorial, but uh, they're they're really playing to to call themselves a state champion. Um, a little bit, there's there's a payout to the pro shop, uh, small amounts for the winners, but uh, it's really mostly about um, a pride and honor and being able to say that you won, got your name on the on the trophy. Now, by the way, we featured 14-year-old Daniel Kim yesterday. He shot a four under 66. Not only did he make the cut his goal, but he's tied for 27th. Congratulations to the 14-year-old. Well, the Wenatchee Apple Sox season came to an end last night with an 11-3 loss at Kelowna. The Falcons earned the number two seed in the WCL's North Division playoffs after Victoria fell in its final game of the season, 10-3 to Portland. For Wenatchee, the game pretty much out of reach early. Kelowna erased a 2-1 deficit in a eight-run third inning. Evan Williams went out strong for the Sox, going three for five at the plate with a double. T.J. Schwartz also two for four with a home run. Wenatchee's Hunter Boyd roughed up on the mound, surrendering 10 runs on 14 hits, four innings, four walks. Apple Sox finished the second half of the West Coast League season 15 and 13. A nice turnaround from an 11 and 15 first half. However, two games under 500 in Coach Kyle Crustangel's second season compared to last year's 29 and 25 mark, probably not going to sit well with the skipper. Also in the West Coast League last night, Gabe Scoro was 4 for 5 with a home run to lead Portland to an 11-3 win over Victoria in the regular season finale there. The expansion Pickles will now travel to Corvallis in the WCL South Division best of three playoffs. Cole Jones, two-run single, highlighted a three-run eighth as Yakima Valley ended the season on a high note. Down in Corvallis, 5-3, the Pippins finished the season 27-27. Joy Morris and five other pitchers combined at a two-hit shutout for Cowlitz as the Bears knocked off Walla Walla 3-0. Sweeps finished the season 28-26, Cowlitz 20-34. So in Friday's first games of the WCL playoffs, Corvallis hosts Portland in the South Division best of three, while Kelowna will host Bellingham in the North Division. While the Wenatchee 12U baseball team's run in the Cal Ripken World Series ended last night with a 14-1 loss to the team from the southwest part of the country, Southwest will play the host team, Phoenix City, Alabama, in today's Iron Bracket Championship. Meanwhile, Pacific Southwest faces Southeast for the World Series Championship after Southeast shut out New England 15-0. And Pacific Southwest edged the Virginia State Champs by a final of 4-3. Well, despite Mike Zanino hitting two home runs, Joey Gallo matched him with a couple of dingers himself. Texas beat Seattle 11-7 to take two of three from the Mariners. 
Marco Gonzalez got roughed up, allowing seven runs on 11 hits in five innings, including a couple of home runs. Seattle was able to cut the Ranger lead to one with a uh, four-run seventh, but Texas rallied for four in the bottom of the seventh off reliever Zach Duke. Seattle limps into Houston, having lost nine of its past 13 games today for a 5-10 start. James Paxton going up against Justin Verlander. Well, back to the Les Schwab scoreboard we go for the rest of the American League West last night. Marcus Simeon, that is, scored on a fielder's choice error in the eighth to break a 2-2 tie. That pushed Oakland past the Dodgers 3-2 as the lead in the American League wildcard race is now full three games over Seattle. Jaime Barrera had three relievers combined on a five-hit shutout for the Angels as L.A. blanked Detroit 6-0. Well, the Seahawks finally get to hit somebody else for tonight as they'll play their first preseason game of the season. Seattle hosts Indianapolis at CenturyLink Field. The big thing Coach Pete Carroll wants to see out of his players tonight is full speed hitting and displaying love of the game. Rather than hitting, you know, just the guys getting out there and playing football for the first time. And uh, that, that's, that's the love of the game showing up because they, 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 uh, they understand that now is the time. We've been waiting and holding back. You know, you hold back all off season. It, it's, it's really not a, a football mentality in the off season. You know, you have to just hold off and hold back. Now they don't have to hold back anymore. So I'm looking to see if, if they can embrace the moment and, and, and jump on it and we can play our tail off and run up and down the field on those kickoffs and show what they got and, and uh, have some fun playing the game we love. Kickoff at 7 o'clock on the local Fox affiliates in Seattle and Spokane. That's Sports News. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric. The Short Shakespeareans are celebrating their 40th anniversary this week with a production of the classic play A Midsummer's Night Dream. In tonight's feature story, during a recent appearance on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, cast member Wiley Case spoke about what he learned from the experience. I really like to be in the place because it, it like you make a lot of friends which is really nice and you really m create a strong bond with the people that you're in it with and also it's really helped me like build up more courage to like talk to other people and get to socialize with others. Case along with fellow cast member Peyton Smith gave us a preview of, of what audiences can expect. And run through fire, I will for thy sweet sake. Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. What though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minutes I would there have spent. Not Hermia, but Helen and I love, who not change a raven for a dove. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When are your hands did I deserve this scorn? Good troth you do me wrong, good sooth you do, in such a disdainful manner me to woo. Oh, that a lady of one man refused, should of another therefore be abused. The show runs through August 11th at the Riverside Playhouse with a 7 p.m. curtain time and a 2 p.m. matinee on Saturday the 11th. Tickets are on sale at the Numerica Pack box office and at the door. We'll be back with our weekly Kennel Cameos feature and your complete local weather forecast right after this. Eastern Washington, it's a great place to call home and a great time to own a home. It's the ideal place to lay down roots for your family and your future. Giza Credit Union thinks Eastern Washington is a great place to own a home too. That's why we offer all kinds of home loans with personal attention every step of the way. We're your home for home loans. We're Giza Credit Union. So Pam, how's your mom doing? She's okay. She's struggling. She'd like to stay in her house and it's getting harder for her to do the daily chores. What kinds of problems is she having? Just basic house cleaning, you know, uh, taking care of her house, yard work, taking care of her medicine. Mm -hmm. It does sound exhausting. It is very exhausting and I always worry about her. Aging and adult care can assist you or your loved one to remain comfortably and safely in their own home. Contact them today to start the conversation. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Great news to report tonight. Yesterday, our weekly kennel cameo, Holly the Cat, was adopted. So check out a rerun of NCW Life's Megan McPherson introducing us to Ruby the dog, who still needs a home. Hey 
Hey guys, Megan here with the NCW Life Channel. We are here with Don Davies, the Executive Director of the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, and we are also here with Ruby the Rottweiler. Don, can you tell us about Ruby? Ruby the Rottweiler, she's six years old. She has a really sweet, gentle personality. You can see that she loves her ball. <laughs> She's playful. Um, she has lived in a home with large animals before and she gets along with them and she gets along and plays with kids too. So she has gone through a little bit of a tough life. She's had been through a couple homes already, not from the Humane Society, but her last owners had her and um, sadly had to give her up because they had to move. So we're looking for a home that will give her all the love and affection that she needs and I think she'd be really easily trainable. She knows sit, she can walk, she um, likes her toys. I think she dropped her ball. So, And what kind of lifestyle is she looking for? Is she active? Yeah, I think she would need an active place. Um, Rottweilers are that way. They're kind of working dogs in a way. So um, I think that she would love to play and love to go on hikes or camping or do whatever but then i think she would love just laying on a couch as much too if someone wanted to adopt ruby what should they do um they can come down to the shelter at 1474 south wenatchee avenue we're open 11 to 6 monday through friday 11 to 3 on weekends um, if you're interested in her just check our website too at wenatchiehumane.org and look under adopt look under dogs and she's right there the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue and is open Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchiehumane.org. This has been Kennel Cameos at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. And time. Uh There we are, time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. And before we get to those details, let's take another look outside our weather window where, yeah, we are dealing with a lot of smoke and haze in the Wenatchee Valley today. I think this is the worst day that we have seen this entire fire season in the Wenatchee Valley. It may hold our temperatures down too. Remember, we predicted about 105 this afternoon. Don't know if we're going to get there with all this filtered sunshine or not, but we'll have to wait and see on our official high temperature. By the way, our high temperature yesterday was 97. Let's take a look at our surface loop now and show you what we can expect as we move through the weekend and into early next week. Today, yeah, it's a hot one out there with temperatures in the red there, all 100 plus. But look what happens as we move to Saturday. We are seeing a cold front move through, remember, so we do have a 20% chance of thunderstorms with windy conditions and possible lightning overnight Friday and into Saturday. And then to end our weekend on Sunday, things look very nice. Temperatures will climb back into the upper 80s, light wind and just a beautiful day on Sunday. Then the heat's back, folks, on Monday. Notice our map once again turning a little bit darker orange and reds all across the west. We'll see highs on Monday in the lower 90s. As we move into Tuesday, just very hot once again with high temperatures climbing back into the middle 90s. Let's take a look at your quick lube and tune forecast now. Low temperatures tonight. Can you believe that? 76 degrees for a low. 73 was our low this morning. We'll see if we break a record or not today. Very hot tomorrow as well at 102 degrees. We will see winds pick up in the afternoon. Not good for firefighting efforts. And then maybe some thunderstorms as I mentioned on Saturday. Much cooler too. Almost 20 degrees cooler. 83. 87 for Sunday. 93 Monday. And then middle 90s for both Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with host Dan Kuntz and News with Steve Hare. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. I'm Sean Lee, and I'm inviting you to check out the NCW Movie Guide to keep up on what movies are playing in our town.